So our first presenter is Allison Kendall, and she's an architect and planner at the Santa Monica firm of Kendall Planning and Design. She is a 15-year Santa Monica resident and chair of the Green Living Committee at the Unitarian Universalist Community Church. Welcome, Allison. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. I really enjoyed all the different booths and seeing many familiar faces here from uh, Sustainable Santa Monica. Um, as, sorry. Okay, as an architect, um, I've been very uh, active in my own firm as well as um, as a member of the Unitarian Universalist Church. So I'm going to be talking to you about both roles and how, uh, as part of our activity at the Unitarian Universalist Church, we promote sustainability. We actually just won, uh, for the third time, a Sustainable Quality Award from the City of Santa Monica. So we've been at this for a while. Um, so we have a Green Living Committee at the church, and one of the things that we enjoy doing is community outreach and helping people to find ways in their own homes, in their own lives, and at the church and in other organizations that they belong to, to promote sustainability. Uh, one of our actual principles as Unitarian Universalists is respect for the interdependent web of all being, of which we are a part. So we don't have that kind of uh, uh, human domination uh, model in our particular spiritual um, history. We have uh, the picture of being part of one. My own uh, journey to becoming an architect actually started with marine biology, but as I learned more about the environmental crises we're all facing, I decided to become an architect and planner because it seemed that those were really the issues that were the most difficult for us. One of the very early projects I worked on early in my career in San Francisco was the transformation of the Presidio of San Francisco into a national park from being an army base. So it was a really interesting model of sustainability where uh, we were looking at historic resources, cultural resources, and recreational resources, and uh, creating a kind of model community. A little bit more challenging one was uh, working on Treasure Island with a similar mission of finding a reuse uh, scenario, but similarly isolated, self-contained, and an entire community that had to be repurposed. Uh, then I moved to L.A. 15 years ago, and specifically to Santa Monica, and I kind of went into culture shock, I've got to say. Um, I couldn't quite get used to the idea that I was supposed to be willing to drive an hour to get to work. And as a result, I turned down a lot of job offers and ended up working with my own firm uh, on bicycle and pedestrian transportation and promoting transit use. So you saw my team there for first last mile planning. This is another one of our projects where we repurposed some of LA's overwide streets into public space in Lambert Park. And I'd urge you all to visit that particular one. As a volunteer with the church, I also um, helped to re restore several historic buildings that were part of the church campus. So, we salvaged this building. We actually had to move it on the lot to get a little more space behind. Um, we did some very cutting edge uh, stormwater management in the back courtyard of the church. Um, that's actually one of the infiltration pits, uh, pits right behind those people. Permeable paving, all that stuff. We got a little bit of help from the city of Santa Monica, although it was literally a drop in the bucket. Um, and then we uh, went on to remodel um, the social hall behind the church with um, a very sustainable reuse of a 1960s building, um, including a solar-ready roof and a lot of uh, new, more energy-efficient uh, windows. And ultimately, we got to our historic sanctuary, which is really the toughest nut in the, in the campus to crack. Um, it's a historic building from 1929, designed by John Byers, who's a local architect that you may have heard of. A um, lot of challenges to keep the historic character of the building and make it energy efficient at the same time. So we did daylighting, um, new roof, and lots of other elements 
Um, it all cost a lot of money that all had to be raised directly from our membership, but we got through it and we're very, very happy and proud of the result. And uh, the city and the local conservancy, Santa Monica Conservancy, has uh, awarded us for our efforts. Uh, the last phase was really a memorial garden along Arizona. So this is an example of some drought tolerant, historically correct landscaping choices with permeable paders that we did for that last little project. Um, our own homes uh, as congregation members have been the focus of our other efforts. So we've really promoted what's called the Energy Upgrade Program. There was some information out there in the booths today about these ongoing programs to promote energy efficiency in the historic and existing buildings. We also work on climate justice. This is a South LA group that works on healthy living and urban farming that we've uh, volunteered with and donated a lot of money and, and time to in their efforts to uh, reach out to other South LA residents with healthy food. We continue to promote uh, sustainable Mobility, um, we actually have a lot of bike racks at our campus. We have a Good Neighbors program that encourages carpooling, taking transit, and other ways of getting to the church. Um, we share parking with UCLA Medical Center as a way to decrease the wasteful use of uh, space for just parking cars, especially when we don't need it very often. We have a whole series of green homes among our membership. This one, particular one, is my own with water conservation in both the, uh, the, uh, the utilities, the fixtures, and so on. This is something that I wanted to point out to all of you is a cool way to find out how you're doing in your own lifestyle. It's called literally coolcalifornia.org, and you can fill out a little questionnaire with information on your own habits and your own home and find out how you compare with other Santa Monicans. And if you read quickly there, you could tell that I'm using half the resources of a typical Santa Monica family. Um, this is what happens if we don't pay attention. This is sea level rise predicted for the Venice area by the end of the century. So the, the stakes are high. We all need to do more than our part, and we need to convince everyone else we know to do what they can as well. Um, we have a saying and a favorite song called The Beautiful Blue Boat Home which we like to sing whenever we think about it, how we're all in this together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alison.